Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's eight o'clock, Wednesday, March 24th. Uh, we are in Eastern time, and I had mentioned I was going to share my testimony on my faith. So here I am. Uh, I have not done this in quite a while. I have not done this in quite a while. So um, hopefully it'll go smoothly. Um, not going to lie, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous here, but I'm excited at the same time. So uh, just going to give it a minute here for people to get on. And um, and we'll take it from here. Um, it's been raining here in the Northeast PA. It's been kind of crazy. Um, be beautiful weather the past few days, so we could use a little bit of rain. <laughs> um, and it's just a beautiful day in God's world, no matter what's going on. So give it another minute here, and I'll start uh, start going through some of this. Um, basically, it's going to talk about how I saw God through certain things that were going on in my life as I grew up and then through my high school years into college uh, and afterwards uh, struggle through addiction and what it's like now. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things from the past. Um, I'm not going to dwell on them, but it's going to be something to use um, as a gauge and a guide to show where I was to where I am now. And um, I'm excited to share. I'm excited to be doing this again. Uh, I find strength and peace in sharing these kinds of things. So uh, when it comes to God and his word and how he can work in our lives. So so I'm going to start here. Uh, it's 8.02, and I'm just going to get going here. And uh, my connection has been getting a little bit interrupted. So if by chance we get cut off, uh, I'll try to restart. I'm not sure how this is going to go. This is twice it happened since I've been live in these two minutes. So I got a sign that said connection interrupted, and now it's fine again. So let's hope it goes smoothly. I got to tell you guys, this morning when I woke up, I wasn't feeling well, and I don't believe in coincidences, and I'm thinking, last night I posted that I was going to give my testimony tonight, and here I am waking up, not feeling so hot, and now we have this connection, the interruption, and I'm like, not today, Satan, get behind me, man. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, this is going to happen whether you want it to or not. So, um, so to start us off, I just want to um, share that I, uh, I'm very grateful to be here, and um you know, there were a lot of things, and I know a lot of people have had our struggles over the years. I'm going to talk about some of mine, and we're overcomers. You know, we made it through, and we're here, and we're here for a reason. There's a purpose for you. There's a purpose for us all. So I grew up in a household. Um, I grew up with my mom and my cousin and my grandmother. There was no biological father in the picture. There was some physical and mental abuse on one hand, and um, as I was growing up, and uh on the other hand, verbal. And then uh, on the other, there was someone always trying to make things better and trying to make things okay. And um, I try to think one way and that was corrected a lot of times to make things better. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, it got to the point where I started second guessing myself and um, that there was always a better way to do things and that I wasn't good enough. And, and of course, there's always a better way to do things at certain points in our lives. But I really never learned to think for myself very well. And um, I would always second guess my decisions or my own thoughts, and that created some perfectionism in my life. Uh, I carried feelings of guilt around all the time, pretty much about everything. Um, even when there was nothing to feel guilty about, I'd feel bad about something I said or something I did when I was just trying to live. And uh, I'd never feel good about myself through all of those things. Even if I'd say something to somebody that was nice, I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I should take it back. So I was never comfortable in my own skin. Uh, I was always wanting people to like me. I was a people pleaser. I wanted people to like me, and I never felt good enough. Uh, I was half in and half out of a lot of things through my life. And um, when I was younger, uh, I was uh, involved in my church, and I'll get to that a little bit. I do have a guide in front of me to reference in case I get sidetracked. So my mind, <laughs> I know how my mind works, and that can happen so easily. But um I was active in church when I was uh, younger. I went to Sunday school. Um, I read scriptures. I played the flute. We'll get to all of that in a little bit. But um, when I got into school, I was active. I was active in school throughout the time I started from kindergarten on through the time I graduated. Uh, I did like school. I liked going to school. Uh, I liked school because I liked to learn, and I still do. But I never felt like I fit in there. I was involved in many activities um, when I was younger, not so much because there wasn't as much to be involved in. But as time went on, I got involved in sports. I was in band. Um, 
I was uh, in the National Honor Society, the newspaper, all those good things. And uh, I was playing the flute growing up. So um, even though I was involved in all of those things, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. I just didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. I was half in and half out of a lot of things. Um, but overall, I, I was considered by the world a very good kid. I did well, like I said, and I actually graduated second in my class on, in high school. But um, when I was around fourth grade, I had gained a lot of weight and I had gotten glasses and braces and I had short curly permed hair <laughs> and I got made fun of a lot. Um, you know how kids are. I remember a lot of those things. I remember some of the comments that were made and the notes that I saw that were passed and the reactions to people of my own presence being somewhere. And um, those are the things I began to focus on. And that really, really was detrimental to me. I was a sensitive kid. And um, I, I just focused on those things. And it's easy to get caught up in those things, um, especially when you want people to like you and you don't think they do. And then things just keep going. And some, what I would try to do sometimes is try to make things better try to make people like me, and that would actually make things worse. So um, so that's what it was like elementary into junior high school, the weight gain, the, the hair, the, the not knowing where I belonged, did, not feeling like I belonged anywhere, to be honest. Uh, once I got to high school, I began to get involved with some sports, and I began to run, and I lost the weight that I had gained. I was playing some sports. Again, I was in National Honor Society. I was in band and all these activities, yet I still didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. Um, as far as church goes, I grew up attending church. I went to sc Sunday school from a young age. <clears throat> I believe that God existed. I truly in my whole heart believed he existed, but I had no concept of who he was or what he was, what he did. The Bible didn't make sense to me. And when we were singing in church, I'd want the hymns to be done. <laughs> I'd be like watching the words. Okay. We're on the third verse. Okay. Let's get to the fifth and we're done. Um, I didn't re I did read scriptures in church. Like I would, I would be one of the readers, uh, but nothing made sense to me. Um, I couldn't pronounce a lot of the words or the names in the Bible either. I'm sure some of you relate to that. Uh, I still can't when I get to some of them. It's like, I don't know, it's kind of funny now, but back then it was very embarrassing because I would just read through everything as fast as I could to get it done. And like I said, nothing in the Bible was really making sense to me. But I always felt drawn to certain people in the church, to the pastors, to the counselors, to the cross. And I felt comforted somehow around those types of people and in those situations. Um, I can remember being around my aunt who uh, was very strong, who is very strong in her faith. And um, I loved her prayers at Thanksgiving. I used to be, I, I would love it like when Joyce would say the prayers. <laughs> um, so uh, those are some of those things that I remember as far as this is how I'm seeing God through through my circumstances. Um, I remember one of the, the people who who was one of my family members who wasn't nice to me is the person that actually taught me the Lord's Prayer when I was a kid. So these are the types of things where it's like, wow, you know, there's one thing going on, but I see God's hand through it all. And I'm sure some of you, you can look back and see the same and, and feel the same. Um, as I got a bit older, I got further and further away from the church and I started going down a path that wasn't so positive. Um, like I said, I never felt like I fit in in high school even though I was involved with a lot of things and I did well. Uh, when I got to college, I specifically remember thinking, and I did attend college, uh, I remember specifically thinking how nobody knew me there. I could be a different person, that maybe I'd fit in and maybe people would like me. I'd find my click, you know, kind of thing. And um, I could tell you, I did. I did become a different person. I did find the clicks. Um, when I got there, I tried to get active in activities like I was involved in high school, but they didn't stick. I began to drink uh, the first few days that I was in college. Um, I maybe drank not even a handful of times in high school. Uh, I was one of those that didn't really get involved with that. Of course, I didn't fit in with that crowd. I didn't fit in anywhere, so it wasn't my thing. <clears throat> but um, I began to drink, drink within the first few days. And I, that first semester, I drank more and more. And I actually gained the, <laughs> gained the nickname Lush from some of the people I was hanging with. I had no idea what that even meant at the time. Um, but when I learned, I was like, oh, that's not good. So um, I also had an eating disorder start to emerge at this time. So I was kind of like, I found this newfound freedom where I could do what I want and be who I wanted to be and not have to worry about pleasing 
the people in the house or, you know, or the people at the school or whatever. I just became a whole different person in a sense. Although I tried to maintain that I was a good person around certain people. So I was kind of living two different lives. Um, my classes began to revolve around my nights out. I tried to extend my weekends and cram my classes into like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I had switched my majors four times in college because I honestly, I lost who I was. I didn't know who I was. I was um, listening to everybody else. I had no idea how to listen to what I really wanted to do, what really I liked in life. Uh, I had no idea what to, uh, about a, a small, still voice and, you know, God wasn't a part of my life. So I didn't know how to even pray or listen, listen for, for him. But um, I see how he was carrying me through these times. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So what I ended up doing is after that fourth switch, uh, I based that my degree on who I, who I was dating and his family at the time. And um, it was a good person, great family. And that just helped make my decision because I really didn't know what to do with myself. And um, so I graduated. I did work through college. I graduated. And like I said, I was dating a good person. And after college, I had a job right away. Uh, of course, not too long after I ended that relationship with this good person and, that, and ended up with someone who wasn't quite so healthy for me. Uh, I had a crush on him in high school. So it's like, oh, my gosh, this guy's all faded. You know, all these these the lights were on, the choir was singing the chords, so to speak. And it's like, oh, my gosh, it's like a fairy tale come true. <laughs> um, but um, so we ended up dating for quite a long time. And I, uh, I ended up finding um, in 1998, I had a really good job. I graduated college in 96. And by 98, I landed a really great job with a biological company. And I was in sales for years. I traveled all over the country and into Canada. Um, I see how my addiction was progressing during this time. I mean, I'd arrive at the airport and drink. And I don't want to get into too many details, but I do want to give some details to show where I was and what God has brought me through. Um, so I did drink a lot of the times when I was out there. I would drink a lot of the times when I was home. And when I was off of work, I was almost drinking around the clock for the most part. Um, I was, uh, the, the uh, addiction escalated uh, from just alcohol and it, it, we began to use cocaine and then that escalated into crack use. Uh, that good job that I had, I was making a lot of money for my area I was, and for my age. And according to the world standards, I had an excellent job. Uh, I ended up losing that and going through all the money I had saved. I was supporting my own habit and my exes, and um, I was becoming unemployable. Um, I would start to, I would try to go to church here and there. I would still try to get there, mostly on holidays, of course. Um, that's how it worked a lot of times with a lot of us out there. Um, and like I said, I lost that job. I was missing so much work. Uh, I had many warnings. And um, by the time I had lost that job, I had been to rehab three different times. But there's one time in Florida when I went to rehab. This is the one I, I mentioned this because I want to mention some, where, how I saw God in one of the rehabs when I was in, I was in Florida. I flew down to Florida to get some treatment. <clears throat> I was there for six weeks almost. I remember when I was there, we were able to watch some TV. We didn't get many channels, but of all people, Joel Osteen was one of the channels we could get. So I was looking forward to uh, trying to watch what little we could. The reception wasn't great, so we were hoping to get reception that I was able to watch him. I ended up meeting a person there who I was really drawn to. I just liked his personality. He was kind of quiet, but when he said something, it was kind of impactful when he spoke. And I found out not long after I met him that he happened to be a pastor of a 500 member congregation of a church. And um, he was in for substance use as well. And, and I, even further, I found out his name was James. So I didn't know I didn't make all these connections right away, but I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's a book in the Bible. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny in that sense. Not ha-ha funny, but ironic. <clears throat> but uh, I also, in this, I want to remind you that, like, addiction and any type of sin does not discriminate. We have to be so aware of these things. And it shows itself in so many different forms. It, it could be work. It could be alcohol or drug or substance use, uh, food misuse and abuse uh, or lack of, unhealthy relationships, worry. There's so much out there. Uh, what I'm discussing are the things that were blatant in my life at the time. <clears throat> but it comes in many forms, and again, it doesn't discriminate. Throughout all of this, I was trying to help with dog rescue. I was involved with that. Uh, that's how my first dog came to me, and that's how Bella came to me as well. Um, anyway, when I was at this rehab, 
got sidetracked. That's why I have this guide in front of me here. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> ADHD mine. Um, so anyway, when I was at this rehab, also they had bought, brought a few pastors to listen for people who wanted to listen to a message. Um, I attended this, this particular, I, I wouldn't call it a service. There were three of them up there. They were all talking here and there, and they were reading from the Bible. Again, I wasn't grasping any of it, but when they were talking, um, they were reading from Romans 8 and speaking on Romans 8. And even though I couldn't grasp what they were reading, I remember saying how much I loved Romans 8. I felt some kind of connection to Romans 8. <clears throat> and I just remember just, just the fact that I was there, I felt somewhat comforted in the way I was able to at the time. And who kn- those seeds were being planted. I didn't know that. I didn't know what was going on. Um, and, and again, I'm mentioning some of this because I can look back and see how God was working in my life back then. So to fast forward... Uh, that particular relationship ended. It got very ugly with the, between the drug use, there was physical abuse. I ended up in the hospital a few times and it wasn't like this was all escalation with everything we were doing. So that relationship ended. I ended up with another one where it was great at first. It was a fairy tale. And then the drug use started again. Um, and some physical abuse started again with this person. Um, let's see here. I was getting so tired of the way I was living. Um, I had gotten a DUI in the meantime in here as well. I lost my license. I had lost that job. Um, I just kept losing, 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 even though I still had a lot to be thankful for. When I look back, I see. And some of those losses are what I needed at the time to bring me to the point where I am now, where I needed to be. Um, At one point in 2007, I believe it was, I didn't look back on the records, but I think it was 2007, I was at a point where I didn't want to go on anymore. And I actually took a bunch of pills and I ended up in the hospital. (laughs) Ambulance came and I woke up and um, I can remember the pastor of the church uh, where I was trying to attend. I was back and forth again, like I said, Uh, he ended up coming to the facility and he prayed with me and for me. I don't really remember a lot of it. I was kind of out of it from what I'd taken and what they were doing, uh, what they were giving me, I guess, to help. I'm not even sure what all of it was. Um, But I remembered I had to go to a psychiatric facility at that point, and I either vowed that I I would never do it again because I didn't like the experience that I had there at all. I would never do it again, or if I would do it, I'd make sure I did it right, that I'd do the job. I'd get it done. So, um, again, I lost that job uh, in 08. Uh, that good job that I had that I had mentioned where I was traveling. I had a sales job. It was all over. Uh, I had just gained five weeks vacation and I was doing very well again, financially for my age and for our area. And I was doing well according to the world standards, but I was always discontent. I was trying to fill my sadness and this void in my life with all these things that I, I have been mentioning. And none of them were, none of them were helping me. Again, through all this, I was trying to find my way back to church. I was going sporadically. I would leave early um, because I didn't feel well. Um, I would sit in the back. I didn't interact with people, but I was still going. I was right where I should be. And here and there, I would start to try to come around and talk with people, but I didn't trust people at all. I I was afraid they were judging me. Uh, I was afraid that they, they knew what I was doing. And I was insecure and I didn't feel good even around anybody, really. I didn't feel I wasn't content myself. I couldn't be content around anybody else. Uh, I did drink in church. I'm not proud of it, but I do share this because I know others out there have done this or, or are doing it. I would sneak into the bathroom while the choir sang and I would pound either a couple of beers or I'd have some vodka with me. <clears throat> and um, I would sneak in and, and that would help with my withdrawal that I was going through and experiencing. And um, or I just wanted to escape a little bit, but a lot of, I was starting to withdraw on a regular basis every day. So I, I, I would try to wait to a certain time to drink. Um, some mornings I couldn't get past 10 AM. Some, some days I could get a little bit further along in the day. So anyway, <clears throat> even though I was drinking in church and I was leaving early or I was coming in late or I wasn't socializing, I believe I was in the right place. So As many, as much as I'm sure people knew what I was doing and most likely talked about me and judged me for it, I was in the right place. I was uh, was in a place where I needed to be healed and you don't know how God's working in someone's life. And I just kept going. Something, no matter what was going on, I just kept trying to go here and there. 
Um, I remember even on those holidays I mentioned when I try to go to church, I'd be drinking before, you know, Christmas Eve service. I drank before the Christmas Eve service, go to the service and then go back out. So that was my life. It's the way I was living. So after my fourth rehab, I still did not get it together. And I was still doing what I was doing. Um, and again, I was becoming employable. I had, I had another job by this point, but I, I was about to lose that. I had a couple of warnings there. Uh, in March, 20, March of 2010, for whatever reason, and I, I'll go into this some other time, I attempted to abstain from substance use again. And it was different this time. Like, I felt differently about it this time. And um, I didn't know if I could do it, you know, because I had failed so many other times before. But something was different. I see how after the first week of making that decision, I was led home instead of going out with coworkers on a Friday night. About three and a half weeks later, excuse me, I was at a, a Lenten service. It was March 24th. Whew, I didn't think I'd get a month. So, 11 years ago tonight, I attended a Lent service at our church. Hold on. Sorry. This is good. This is good tears. The pastor was speaking. The same pastor that visited me went to my DUI hearing. He called me in the middle of the night when I wanted to commit suicide again. And um, his name was Mike. And I didn't remember a lot of this evening. I can tell you I was three and a half weeks without any substances, but uh, I didn't remember a lot of what was going on. But I remembered about, I remember he was talking about someone tap, he remembered talking about someone tapping him on the shoulder, not knowing for sure if it was a real person or not. That's, I think, the only thing I really remember him speaking on when he was giving his sermon. I don't really have much of a recollection, uh, recollection but after the service, apparently, and I learned all this later, I went up to him and said I wanted to talk to him about what he was speaking about. And he said, well, talk to me now. What do you want? What do you want to know? Or something to that, to that effect. And apparently I said to him, I want what you were talking about. The next thing I do remember is seeing people, there were a couple people that I saw leaving and the door closed and I was on my way out the door. That's how this happened. And I remember him gathering some people. They said the chairs, he gathered two chairs and we were down by, we were by an altar that was in the church and we sat facing each other and he held my hands and he began praying for me and there were people around me putting their hands on me. And I don't really remember much about what he has said in his prayer. I do remember him saying something about afterwards, me being a daughter of Christ and that the devil's going to come at me. What I remember was when where he was holding my hands, they were like tingly and numb, almost like pins and needles, but not like painful. Uh, I remember my pants and my I was wearing jeans and my legs were really hot. I could feel the heat through my jeans. And I remember feeling like my breathing was almost constricted, but it wasn't scary. I just felt really tight. Um, I remember, like I said, just the people around me, and they had their hands on me. And after he was done, I kind of looked up and I felt like I had woken up. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know what it meant to be reborn. I didn't know what it mean, meant to be saved. Um, those were new terms for me. I didn't even know those words existed. <clears throat> but I do know that I went home. Uh, well, first of all, I walked out that night a different person. I walked out of there a whole different person. I went home and I called my aunt and I had asked her what happened. And she told me, <laughs> she's so cute. She's like, you were infilled with the Holy Spirit. She told me to mark my calendar. So I did. And I believe that's why I remember this night so well, um, because I was able to discuss it with her afterwards. And she told me to mark my calendar. So um, that really, it really solidified what had happened, but I still didn't understand any of it. I, I got off the phone. I'm like, still, what does this mean? You know, I just, I couldn't grasp any of it. Um, after that night, I had no desire to use any substances, and I started to feel some joy and began to see the world and people in the world in a whole other light. And I had been to four rehabs, like I had mentioned, and many other things that, that were around me to help plant seeds, but I truly believe that accepting Christ that night is what changed my life and began the transformation that I so desperately needed and desired, even though I didn't know it. After that, um, 
I had seen things that were supernatural. Um, some of you know, when you've come to your faith, you see all, you see all these people. I had gotten messages from people just even on the trail that didn't make sense, but yet they spoke to me. Um, oh my gosh, there were so many things. I have them logged, but I don't want to get into all the details now. And again, this doesn't happen the same for everybody, um, but it does happen and it happens in different ways for each of us. Um, and all these things that were happening, um, these situations and these signs and these supernatural things, they, that's what helped keep me going and helped keep me grounded and helped to keep me wanting more of that and to learn more about God and to learn more about what Christ had done for us. I got involved with my church and I just wanted to keep learning so much. And remember those words in the Bible that I mentioned in the beginning of this clip, they started to make sense. I remember writing to my friend, it's all making sense now when we were sitting in a Bible study. Um, and that's his Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit. Um, so months later, to connect some of these dots that I didn't quite understand, I talked with that Pastor Mike and asked him exactly what happened. And he told me what he was preaching about. And I didn't, like I said, have any clue. I don't really remember much of it. But that was the night that he... That night, he was actually preaching about the night that he accepted Christ into his life. And I went up and said that I wanted that. How precious is that? I can't, I still can't believe that to this day. Um, he told me what happened when I was about to leave. He, he told me about our conversation, and that's how it went, that I told him I wanted what he was talking about. And um, that's when all of that happened. That's when he gathered all the people around us and stuff. So months after that, when I was attending a Bible study, we were discussing our spiritual gifts. When the gift of healing came up in our in our study, um, they were talking about experiences that some people have with healing. And one of the things that came up in the study is something that happened with Pastor Mike and myself. Um, that would have been the tingling of the hands that I would mentioned. And remember, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know it existed. And that was just an affirmation that, oh, my gosh, I looked at the guy next to me and I'm like, that's what I felt when Mike was praying for me. And um, I had asked Mike couple not too much longer after that bible study uh he does have the, he 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 confirmed that he had the gift of healing so uh it was very meaningful and very powerful uh to have something happen and to not even know and then to learn afterwards that that's that was what the holy spirit was doing so these things do exist these things do happen even in these modern days and um so after I accepted Christ into my life, I began to appreciate everything, and I began to appreciate everything, especially out in nature. Uh, I couldn't get enough, and I wanted to capture and remember everything I was seeing and thinking and feeling, and that's how my photography career began. Um, I started putting things on Facebook. I started talking about my experiences, and I started to just, I got my first camera. Um, the camera's just a tool. To me, it's all God. And my first print actually sold in 2013. I came to Christ in 2010. My first print sold in 2013. And it just kept going and growing from there. And I didn't do anything to force this. I just kept going with it, and like I still do. And um, it's just evolved into a beautiful thing. And that's God. That's our God for you. Not I, but Christ. <laughs> so uh, some of the other things I feel I've been gifted through these experiences is that I have peace through my circumstances, even when I feel like I don't. I know what it's like to not have the peace of Christ. So when I feel a little discontent in my own humanness and in my own circumstances, um, I'm still grounded in Jesus. I'm still grounded in God. And I still have the Holy Spirit in my life. There's times where I have fallen short. Um, but because of his love and his forgiveness, um, that covers that. And I know there's a verse, uh, I think it's 924 in Mark. And it says, help me to believe my unbelief when I'm struggling with some of the things to believe in. It's like, how do I, you know, is this true? Is, am I just, you know, sometimes, I mean, that's common from what I understand and it's normal. So Lord, help me believe my unbelief. Um, I know my feelings are, are valid, but they don't dictate my life. Feelings also aren't always facts. We don't have to act on them. Um, they're not always facts, but they are sing signals and signs for us to listen to at times. Do I still struggle yet? Yeah, of course I do at times. Um, did I have a rough year this past year and backslide in some areas of my life? Of course I did. Does that make me any less with God? No, it doesn't. That's 
actually why Christ did what he did for us. He died for us so we can be forgiven, so we can live a life of abundance and joy and peace in him, no matter what's going on. I think there's a verse about that in the Bible somewhere. It's in Philippians, to learn to be content in all circumstances. Philippians 4, look it up. It's right before I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Um, we're still perfect in him, and we're still forgiven in him, even in our human ways. Um, as long as we try to, our best to turn away from the things that take us away from God, and we keep trying, we'll see him in everything, and he's with us through it all. I know I don't have to condemn myself anymore when I mess up. And condemning means, like, feeling guilty or feeling like you're wrong or that you're not good enough. Uh, Christ didn't come to condemn us. In fact, that's one of the verses in Romans 8 that I mentioned earlier. Christ didn't come to condemn us, but he came to save us and save the world. So we can acknowledge our faults and the, the things in our lives that need to be changed as they're, as they're revealed to us. So, yeah, acknowledgement and change, yes, but condemnation, no. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to others. That's not what Christ is about. Compassion, transformation, understanding, education, and growth, so to speak. Wisdom, maybe is a better word, and growth. <clears throat> I also want to mention that you don't have to be down the path as far as I've been in order to turn to God. I mean, there are many different types of stories out there. Some are a little more dramatic than others, and that's just, just we, we're all created for a purpose to serve the people that are in our paths and to, um, you know, we don't know how God's always working behind the scenes in our lives or in the lives of others. Um, we just have to use what we're given and let him do, do what he needs to do as we follow his ways, <laughs> as we follow in him. But, um, but years ago, I remember when I was speaking, and, and um, I don't have too much more time here for you guys. So if you're wondering, um, but I'm getting there. Years ago when I was speaking at a Lenten service in church, uh, I was jotting a few things down as I was getting the message together beforehand. And a list began to form. And here's um, some of the things that I've learned as far as what Christ has done for me and what God has for us. Um, I've learned what true unconditional love is. Um, I've learned what it means to have compassion. I've learned what it means to be submissive in a healthy way to God, to strive for humility. I uh, learned what forgiveness is and what, it, what salvation means and trust. We can also still have broken hearts, but we can lift our eyes and hands to him. Praise him in the storm, so to speak. Um, what, what coming to my faith did for me and what it's brought me from, here's this like list I just mentioned. Um, and this is something that um, I'll say over and over again. I've used this a couple of times now. <clears throat> but um, this is what, what God has done for me. He brought me from darkness to light, from wrong to right, from the feeling of uselessness, or from being useless, <laughs> to a purpose, from sadness to a joy or a contentment, from despair to hope from bondage and oppression to myself, to other people, to my situations. He brought me from all of that to freedom, freedom in Christ. Brought me from lost to found, from fallen to risen, from many tears to more smiles and even laughter, from feeling guilty all the time to not feeling ashamed and to feeling kind of innocent. And, you know, we're washed clean. We're, we're clean in him. You don't have to feel that guilt. Brought me from being sick to healing. From a mess to hopefully a message. From suffering to relief. From deception, denial, and dishonesty to myself and to others. To honesty and truth. Brought me from feeling lonely or estranged to reconciliation. He brought me from discontent or discontentment to peace, serenity, and contentment. Like I said, these are works in progress. <laughs> Sometimes things pop up like the whack-a-mole game, but uh, there are always things to work on. So from discontentment to contentment, peace, and serenity. From low self-esteem to more confidence, at least more confidence in him. 
travels into ourselves and into our hearts. He brought us from doubt, he brought me and us from doubt and fear to faith, from apathy and indifference to caring, from dislike and hate to love, from people pleasing to God pleasing, from seeing negative in people, situations, and in myself to a more positive outlook. We learn more about him. We learn more about who we are in him. And I've learned to see God in and through these very things in myself and others, uh, in our situations. He brought me from indifference or harshness to compassion, from self-will and defiance to learning and obedience and even self-denial. Again, works in progress. Selfishness. He brought me from selfishness to becoming more selfless, from foolishness and foolish behavior to wisdom, or at least the want and desire for wisdom, from feeling powerless over everything to feeling powerful through him, meaning the ability, the ability to, to, to do what, need, what needs to be done, or just the ability to have him in our life gives us that power. Think about all the things that Christ stands for. We have, we have that since we are believers in him. He brought me from refusal and rejection to acceptance, from pride and arrogance to the desire for humility, brought me from weakness to strength, brought me from broken to whole, and he brought me from death to life. I don't believe in coincidences but I believe there are God incidences. It was once dictated by the ways of the world, now hopefully dictated by God. And again, this is not all at once. This is a lifelong process. It's part of the transformation. Things will continue to pop up. We're all at different stages in our walk with Christ. But if we continue to see God first and seek God first, I should say, we will still be victorious over these things, over anything that comes our way in our life. And he'll continue to grow and transform and change us. <clears throat> Jesus is not a temporary fix to my human problems. He's a permanent fix to my temporary or earthly condition. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, he's an eternal fix and he's a way maker while we're here on earth. I can never give back what God has done for me or given me, but I can continue to move forward. I don't need to live in the past, but to use my experiences for a greater good. Again, my days aren't always spiffy or fluffy, but I have the peace of God under it all. I know things will be okay and that God's got it, and he truly does for me what I cannot do for myself. My worst day with Jesus is better than my best day without him. Guys, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I do feel like I need to be sharing this in God's word. I believe it's where I find my strength and my peace. When I'm not sharing, I don't do so well. Perhaps it's because it's what I'm part of. Uh, what it, it's part of what I'm meant to do. I believe I'm being some, called to some type of ministry. I've felt this for years. I've literally felt this for years. I believe the photography will sell itself through, through this, uh, whatever it is I end up doing. <clears throat> Um, kind of like with Paul with his tent making. If you're not sure about that, check it out. He his ministry, but his uh, but he had tent making to help. Remember that Jesus loves you and wants a relationship with you. He, he's reaching his hand out to you right now. He wants you to take it and walk with him in his peace. Uh, if there's anything I could ever do um, to help, to encourage, or to pray for you, let me know. Uh, if there's any way. You need someone to give a a testimony or a word of encouragement. Please let me know. Things are done virtually these days and in person. I've traveled different different places speaking different things. And um, I just want you to know how much he loves you and that there's if you're living in a a life that you're, you know, is not for you. um, Put your faith. Just just look to Christ. Put your faith in God. Uh, Your life will change. Again, this is just the beginning. Putting your faith in Christ is just the beginning. The rest is about transformation, growth, and learning, and um, growing in him. 
and making an impact in the world. You become an ambassador when you believe in Christ. It's just a matter of what kind of impact you're going to make on the world. Know that God loves you, has you in the palm of his hands. Cast your cares to him as you go to sleep tonight. Give him the hymn so you can get some rest. He cares for you. He's got you. He's got you in the palm of his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. I know some of you know the song. You'd be singing that one. <laughs> but, uh, or at least I will be possibly after I'm done here. But I really, really appreciate you guys uh, jumping on here and listening. And um, if there's anything I could do for you, let me know. I will be posting this so you could go back and listen. Um, again, may God be glorified through this, uh, meaning he just gets all the credit for what he's done. And I'm very grateful to be here, and I'm very thankful for what he's done. And I wish you nothing but peace, love, strength, and abundance and joy in him. And um, may God continue to bless and keep you until next time. Amen.